Well, my thanks to Terry and to all of our music people, everyone making worship possible this morning, and to Sylvia as well. Uh, we continue our journey into the Gospel of Luke, and we continue where we were from last week, where we looked at the Great Command, and this is the rest of the story, if you will, as we look at loving our neighbor. On one occasion, an expert, this is 10, 25 through 37, by the way. On one occasion, an expert of the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied, how do you read it? And he answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You've answered correctly, Jesus replied, do this, and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road when he saw the man, but he passed by on the other side. So to a Levite, when he came to place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came to where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, and gave them to the innkeeper, looked after him, he said, and when I return I will reimburse you for any extra expense that he might have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell among robbers? The expert in law replied, the one who had mercy on him. And Jesus told him, go and do likewise. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts and minds this morning. Well, we look at loving our neighbor this morning and uh, the rest of the story here as we continue following in the footsteps of Jesus. Well, heard the story of this uh, courtroom and this little old lady, gray haired with spectacles on, was up in the witness box and uh, the prosecuting attorney comes up and he asked her as a witness, he said, ma'am, do you know me? And this little old lady said, well, yes, Mr. Williams, I do know you. I've known you since you were a little boy, and frankly, you've grown up to be quite a disappointment to me. <laughs> you lie, you cheat, and you have a shoddy law practice. You've been quite a disappointment. Well, the attorney was absolutely shocked by that. The courtroom applauded and, and laughed and everything, and he didn't know what else to say. He said, well, do you know the defense attorney? And she said, well, I happen to know Mr. Bradley, too. I used to babysit him for when he was a kid. And he also has been a big disappointment to me. He's got a shoddy law practice. He's got a drinking problem. He can't have a relationship with anyone. Yes, I know him. Well, a court, the courtroom broke out in laughter again, and the judge had to wrap the gavel on the bench, and he said, I want both attorneys to approach the bench. And then with a the gavel, he shook his hand at him and said, if either of you asked her if she knows me, I'll jail you for contempt. <laughs> well, it was a good day for a lawyer joke. You know what I mean? So... So this lawyer comes to Jesus in this moment, and he's obviously been listening to Jesus, who he's looked at last week, and asked him what the greatest command is. And Jesus flipped it around and said, what, what is the great command? What must I do to inherit life? And we looked at last week, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. Everything about us, and then he adds the part that Jesus adds as well as he reflects back into this prayer from the Old Testament, and love your neighbor as yourself. And in this moment, uh, he has this little, there's this little pause, right? And he began to feel guilty, maybe, and so it says he wanted to justify himself, right? And said, who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? Like, maybe we can draw a fence, a line, so it's me and others and who have you. And in response, Jesus tells this famous story of the Good Samaritan. And you know it well. This man goes, and I was on this this road, and it is out in the middle of the desert. It's high and dangerous, and there's cliffs and everything else, and it is dangerous. And even to this day, there's a danger of robbers. And so you can only imagine back in the day where a person was walking, or maybe they had a donkey or whatever it was, and just enough water maybe to make it through there. And the man fell among thieves who may have come out of the cliffs and surprised him. 
They beat him up, uh, took his money, and left him for dead. And along comes a priest, a religious person, and sees him, and Jesus says he walks by on the other side of the road. And as a religious person, maybe he had an excuse, right? Because he actually couldn't soil himself, right? Uh, or be part of religious ceremonies, but he walked by on the other side of the road when he should have helped him. Next person where maybe where our hope is growing, and it's a Levite. A Levite was a, was a business person, upstanding citizen, and he too walks by on the other side of the road, and then there's the Samaritan. The Samaritan. Now, we call it the good Samaritan, but back in that time, there was all kinds of enmity, even as there is today, between the Samaritans and the Jews, different race, uh, different culture, different religion. And so, honestly, the only good Samaritan for a lot of these people was a dead Samaritan, unfortunately. And so the Samaritan comes, and what does the Samaritan do? The person we least likely think will help the person, the Samaritan goes all in. He sees the man, he sees the need, he's moved by that, and uh, he not only uh, helps him, bandages up his wounds, cares for him, uses uh, oil and wine. Wine would have been an antiseptic at the time, and uh, oil would have soothed the, the wounds and brought some comfort. But he also takes him to an inn on his own donkey and then pays for that and says, any extra expenses I'll take care of when I come back. And Jesus asks, which man was the neighbor. And for all of us, I think, you know, we all have heard this before a number of times. And we talked last week about the vertical relation, ship with God, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, everything that you have. And your neighbor is yourself because the vertical relationship empowers our horizontal relationship with others and transforms that relationship. And in this startling moment, Jesus sort of cuts through so many different things. And I think in our own lives, some things we need to think about here is, uh, I think really three things, maybe to startle ourselves from just the familiarity of that. And the first thing is to, is seeing, is to see the need. Now that may sound easy, doesn't it? To see the need, but the truth is a lot of times, what, what do we do? We look the other way, right? It's easy to look the other way. You know how we can make people invisible. And maybe we even see them out of the corner of our eye, and then we, we make them other than ourselves, right? Other than a neighbor. Maybe it's race, religion, politics, all kinds of things where we can make someone other than a neighbor, other than a friend, different culture, anything else. We look the other way. To really be able to, to see a person for the humanity of, of who they are in that moment, to see them as a neighbor, to see them as someone in need. And I think the other thing is then, the next thing is to, to sympathize. You know, the first part is our, is our head, right? It's our eyes to be able to look there and say, oh, wait, you know, sure they're a different race, sure they're different religions, different political party, whatever that is, different culture, different language, but they're a person like me. But the next thing is to allow our heart to be moved, our head and then our heart to allow our heart to be moved by their need. Maybe we've had something like that before happen in our own heart. Maybe we haven't, but we've all known someone who's hurting and in need, whether beside the road or wherever they are. And to allow our heart to be moved in that moment. I heard this uh, film producer, you might know Richard Curtis, Four Weddings and a Feudal and some of the other ones that he's written, but um, he had this transforming event in his life, and I heard this great interview where he was talking and sharing, and um, he said, I, I don't really call myself a, a Christian or a believer in a lot of ways. I'm still struggling with that. But he said, I do understand the great command, and I do understand the story of the Good Samaritan. I said, from my interpretation in my life, I decided that what I was going to do is to allow my life to be, to be transformed. And he said, I can't be a pastor or a missionary or something. He said, but I'm a film producer. And I decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to make films, comedy films, in, in my case, and make all the money I can to do all the good that I can do. And so he started the, you might see the red nose thing that he do a lot in Britain, sometimes here too, a charity that helps other people. 
and uh, he set up a camera in a part of India where he just has people on the street. But he said, I can't change the world in a lot of ways, but I can do what I do and then give what I have so I can make a difference. And I don't know all the theological truths in the world, but I understand the great command, and I understand the story of the Good Samaritan. And I think for all of us, too, to be able to see and then be able to sympathize, to be able to see with our head and understand that, and then allow our heart to be moved. And the third thing, I think, is to seize the day, to allow our hands to do something, right? Now, I know a lot of us can't do a lot of things, but we can all do something, right? So if you can't help everybody, but everybody can help somebody, what can we do with our hands and, and lives? Sometimes Savannah see me, we, you know, you're overwhelmed. Sometimes there's enough need in, in the immediate area here in Lafayette, but sometimes we've been in Chicago and uh, come out of a restaurant with, um, and I rarely carry cash. I <laughs> just use because if I have cash, I don't know where it went to, right? So, but if I have my card, I know, oh yeah, I spent it for this. So, but and I usually go to a big city, I have a little amount of cash, and I kind of would give something away. But you know, we just walked out of this restaurant. We had this, you know, container to go because way too much food for us. And you know, we think about what we're gonna do later. And there was a person there in the in the street, and they needed money and something to eat. And you know, we just handed them that. You know, this it wasn't a lot, but maybe it was something for them. There's other things that we do, and. In our own lives, sometimes we've done the Lum Shelter and um, on Saturday evening, and uh, for us, we do grilled cheese sandwiches and applesauce, <laughs> you know? But there's something, not just about doing something, but when you are engaged with a person, then you realize also the humanity of the person. You realize that not all of them have the same reason why they're in that situation, because sometimes we want to just lump that all together, but they all have personal laws. We must have some kind of tragedy or hurt or heartbreak or something behind all of that. And as you begin to just do what you can do as a fellow human, you realize that you really are fellow humans and you can make at least a little difference. And if all of us did a little something, what would, what would that be like in our hearts and lives? Where are you today in living out our faith? You know, sometimes we get dried up with our faith and we forget, you know, sometimes just my mom used to say when I was uh, feeling down, she said, well, just go do something for somebody. <laughs> maybe it's somebody you know, maybe it's a stranger. And that was just good philosophy. You know, I do that because sometimes we get absorbed with ourselves, and we do have needs and we do need, you know, to think about those needs and reflect on those and journal all kinds of things. But sometimes we need to get out of our own self and our own lives and fixating on our needs, and when we see the needs of someone else, we begin to see, well, you might see one, they have a lot more need than we do, and it kind of puts it in perspective, but also you see that you can make a difference in the world. You can make a difference in the world. It's as simple as being able to see the humanity in someone else. You have to see them as yourself. You can see them and say, they've got a different race, different religion, different language, different culture, different politics, whatever that is. But then you see there's a common thread if you look long enough. And then allow your heart to be touched and moved as we are all able to do something and we've all had hurts. And sometimes what we want to do is we want to, from our own hurts, we seal ourselves off from that because we know that we've been in need and we don't want to be in that place. And so somehow that's a way of distancing ourselves. But the truth is, when we allow our hearts to be moved in this way, then our lives can be changed. In this moment, in this moment, this man saved a life just by taking enough time. The Samaritan, the one who was different, the last person we'd ever expect. So much so, that when Jesus said, which man was the neighbor to this man, the man couldn't even say the word Samaritan. He said, the one who showed him mercy, which was even more true. In our own lives, we're in a world that is often divisive, often polarized. And I'm not going to diminish any of those differences, but what I would say is that we all have needs. We all have a common humanity, and sometimes just by offering a glass of water, or doing some small act of kindness, you can transform someone else's life into a golden moment where their life has changed and you might find 
that your own life is transformed as well. Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. That one thing can transform the whole world. The whole world right there. I want to close with this story and this thought. First of all, that Gandhi, who is not a Christian, but transformed much of life, said that he sort of tried to live his life by this and the Beatitudes. Because it's the truest thing that he ever saw, and the most transformative thing that he ever saw. And the second thing is a story by a man by the name of M.K. Asante. This is an African American that grew up in South Philly and is known for, he's got some movies and what have you, and some short stories. But I, I love one short story that he has. And the short story goes like this it's of, of Miss Sally in South Philly. And Miss Sally is blind and older and lives in a home by herself, but she gets along. And even though Miss Sally is blind, Miss Sally, like a lot of blind people, has an odd way of seeing certain things. You know what I'm talking about? It's like Fanny J. Crosby, the great blind hymn singer. But the teenagers sometimes would have fun with Miss Sally. And on one particular day, some boys found a, a bird that had been hit by something that was failing and broken wing. And so the three boys picked up this bird and they went and they knocked on the door of Miss Sally. And Miss Sally comes to the door. She's blind, but she opens the door and she says, how are you doing? The boys were snickering and laughing and they said, Miss Sally, we have a bird in our hand, one of us does, and we want us, you to tell us, is it dead or alive? Well, Miss Sally thought for a moment. And when she said, boys, no one, they knew she was blind, she said, I don't know whether that bird is dead or alive, but I know one thing, it's in your hands. I think today, we have a lot more in our hands than what we realize. If we allow our head to see, see not just the differences, but the similarities that are there, our hearts to feel and our hands to do, to do something good and to make the world better. Amen? Amen. Will you join me in prayer? Lord, we thank you for your word. It is a light for our path and a lamp for our pathway along life. So, Lord, help us to allow your word to change and transform our lives as your Holy Spirit works in us each and every day. Lord, help us to follow this simple thing that is so difficult but is possible through the power of the Holy Spirit to indeed love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength and to love our neighbors as ourself, and so fulfill the greatest commands of all. We pray in Christ's name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.